SpaceX's Starship is gearing up for its biggest jump, and this time the heat tiles hold the key to success. Unfortunately, Ship 24 continues to suffer from a problem with the heat shield tiles. Will this problem be fixed for the first orbital flight, and how? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Firstly, I want to be honest with you that the falling heat shield is a very, very common problem in the rocket industry, even with a crew mission. On August 8, 2007, the shuttle Endeavour carried a crew of seven into orbit on an ISS assembly mission. The liftoff of STS-118 looked like many of the other launches during the shuttle program, and its mission was another trip to the ISS. So far, so good. Notably, there was some unplanned attention during this mission due to a small area of damage on Endeavour's heat shield. Thankfully, the post-flight analysis showed the orbiter and crew were safe. This incident is just one of the numerous instances of tile damage that the shuttle fleet sustained during its operational lifetime. Rewind a couple of decades to the 1980s. Extensive tile damage was observed by ground crews after the shuttle Atlantis touched down at Edwards Air Force Base in December of 1988. STS-27 was a Department of Defense flight and launch of a surveillance satellite for the National Reconnaissance Office and the CIA. The exact details of the deployment are still classified. Atlantis sustained heavy damage to the heat shield during STS-27, suffering over 700 damaged or missing tiles. You can see the tile damage in this picture. Note the white pockmarks scattered along the black tiles on the near side of the shuttle. The damage was bad enough to shake veteran astronaut Robert Hoot Gibson, who said to himself, we're going to die. The worst of the damage is this picture. Thankfully, as Gibson explained, there was a steel plate that took the brunt of the heat from re-entry. And now Starship's first orbital flight looks like it won't be able to avoid this trouble. Starship S-24 completed its first successful static fire on August 9th, igniting two Raptor engines. Several unsuccessful attempts to test more engines followed throughout the rest of the month, and SpaceX ultimately decided to replace one of Starship's S-24's three Raptor vacuum engines in early September before trying again. After workers installed the new engine and buttoned up Ship 24, the stars eventually aligned on September 8th. Outfitted with upgraded Raptor 2 engines, Starship S-24 could have produced up to 1,380 tons or about 3 million foot-pounds of thrust when it ignited all six for the first time. On top of smashing the record for the most thrust produced during a Starbase rocket test, Ship 24's engines burned for almost eight seconds, making it one of the longest static fires ever performed on a Starship test stand. However, this test run was not completely successful as it managed to repeat a problem that's plagued the upper stage Starship before as well. Many heat tiles on the ship have been falling due to the immense vibration produced during static fire. In fact, a Twitterer named Zach Golden on Twitter has counted almost 30 damaged or missing tiles on Ship 24 after a six-engine static fire test that lasted for eight seconds. In reply to that, Elon Musk tweeted, yep, there's a reason we do static fires. Much better to break things on the ground than en route to orbit. Note, this is not the first time Elon Musk has had to face the same question. Last year, in the static fire on Ship 20, many tiles fell. A follower of Musk, Toby Lee, asked him, looks like some TPS tiles fell off during static fire. Do you think this will be a major issue for the orbital launch, or does the team already have a solution? And we got a very surprising reply from him. No, we expect some tiles to shake loose during static fires. And after that, he added, shaking out the problems, literally, ha ha. SpaceX is aiming to make the upper stage fully reusable, which will be a first in the aerospace world. The company already reuses the first stage boosters off Falcon 9 rockets, but it has to manufacture a new second stage for each mission. Therefore, the second stage remains a big component of the launch cost of Falcon missions, even if SpaceX reuses the first stage. Unlike the Falcon 9 second stage, which is not designed to transport humans, Starship's upper stage will double down as both cargo and crew transportation, depending on the mission profile. The heat shield is crucial for Starship survival as it will flip itself at an angle that exposes the shield to either the Earth or Mars atmosphere. A tiny error in this area would result in a spacecraft disintegration during landing, 
and threaten the lives of the crew on board should it receive a human rating. So one of the biggest challenges the team faces is finding a solution to preventing tiles from falling off. Until now, Musk has not explained how they'll handle this issue. So what do you think about this? Maybe you guys know what SpaceX should do. And now given the importance of the heat shield, let's see what's the range of the heat shield resistance. In 2019, SpaceX conducted heat shield testing. At times, the hottest part of the tiles withstood temperatures of 1650 Kelvin, and Musk said that's a whopping 2510 degrees Fahrenheit, 1377 degrees Celsius. In the past, NASA's also installed thermal protection systems on its space shuttles as a way to protect the spacecraft from atmospheric temperature of 1650 degrees centigrade or 3000 degrees Fahrenheit and all the lower belly of the space shuttle, including the wings and nose, which are in direct contact with the air resistance, are fitted with a thermal protection system. SpaceX has learned from NASA's experience with the space shuttle, but there's a lot of difference here. The space shuttle had an aluminum structure that would weaken at 300 degrees centigrade and melt around 660 degrees centigrade, so they needed a huge amount of thermal insulation. So they ended up with very thick but fragile tiles. Starship has a stainless steel structure that's still strong at 1,000 degrees centigrade and won't melt until 1,400 degrees centigrade. So they can use thinner, denser, stronger thermal tiles, and they won't use any tiles at all on the leeward side. The tiles on the shuttle were glued and the glue itself could be a weak point. Meanwhile, the tiles on Starship are attached with three bolts or three studs per tile so the tiles can move a small amount, ensuring they don't get damaged during expanding and contracting of the tank and tiles during the temperature change of fueling and re-entry. SpaceX is using uniform hexagonal tiles, and they're automatically mounted so any repair can be made much faster and more cheaply, whereas the Space Shuttle had 23,400 unique tiles fitted to the particular spot on the vehicle, so those tiles were very expensive to check and maintain between flights. In short, a lot of new improvements have been added to the Starship heat shield, and hopefully SpaceX will fully optimize it on the next test. That just about wraps it up for today's episode, and don't forget, subscribe, press that like button, and share your ideas in the comments section below, because your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much, and hope to see you next time.